Here I'm going to show you how to list slicer selections inside of a single cell. So check out the categories right here. Here we have our pivot table and slicer. Bathroom, then we see bathroom, gardening, and so on. Everything updates, and if we have multiple selections, no problem. This is a great little trick I'm going to show you. Now make sure to download this file so you can follow along and like, subscribe, and click the bell icon so that I can make more tutorials for you guys. Now I'm going to clear everything out and we're going to start from scratch. Alright, here we go, and it already looks a lot less impressive. In this example, we have three worksheets. One for pivot tables, one for helper, where we're going to store some hidden data and one for raw. This is what's going to be used to make the pivot tables. And the first step is to turn this into a table. So click in here, hit Control T, or go to Insert Table, and check My Table Has Headers. If you have headers on your columns, which you should, it will make life much easier. And there we go. Now you don't have to use a table for a pivot table, but the benefit is that if you add any values here, it will automatically be added to the pivot table when you go to data and refresh all. So basically it will just make your life easier. Now go to table design and summarize with pivot table, then existing worksheet, and let's go to pivots. And uh, let us create one with manufacturer. And how about category and item ID. And then let's use quantity for the values. All right, so we have a nice, neat pivot table. Now let's add a slicer to it. So click it, go to pivot table, analyze, insert slicer, and let's use category. Hit OK. And now we have a one pivot table and a slicer that will be used to control its output. So far, so good. But that doesn't really help us with categories just yet. So what we're going to do is kind of an interesting little thing. We are going to go over here, hit Control A to select the pivot table, then Control C to copy it. Then go over here and Control V. Now what we have is a second pivot table that is also connected to this slicer. So if I make a choice here, it works for both of them. Now how is that going to help us? Because we can control quite a bit for a pivot table. So what we want to do over here, if you're not recording your screen and you have a normal size Excel, this is much easier to work with. But we want to remove item ID and a manufacturer, and leave only in the rows that which will appear in the slicer. So category here, category here. And then we can go ahead and remove values. So far, it is looking rather lean. So let's right-click grand total and remove even more. Remove grand total, and row labels, Right-clicking is not going to let us remove that, but we can go to Pivot Table Analyze and click Field Headers. Then we have this, which normally isn't going to be very helpful, but look what happens when we click Bathroom. Just Bathroom. Gardening. Just Gardening. Now how about multiple selections? There we go. Can you think of anything that could help us combine all of these? the good old trusty text join, a function in newer versions of Excel that is amazing. So uh, let's for the delimiter use a comma with a space and ignore empty, true. That means it will not add empty cells. And for text, simply select the entire column. Close that guy up, enter, and there we go. Deselect some and we have no extra commas. Perfect. Now what do we do? Well, we take this guy, hit Control A, then Control X, so select everything, then cut it, go to the helper worksheet, and paste that guy in. And then we go over here, 
and we update text join to refer to the helper worksheet column A. Enter, and there we go. Now we can move this guy over here and go to a view and remove the extra stuff. And we will start to have a nice little setup. And additional things that you could do, there are about a million of them, but we could right click this and then go to pivot table options and in layout and format, uncheck auto fit column widths on update. Uh, that way, when we change this, this guy isn't always changing the column size, which can be very, very annoying. We could also hide the helper worksheet. So right click and it's off the screen right now, but hide. And we could even hide the raw worksheet as well and then have a single simple worksheet like this. It's kind of funny all the hoops we have to go through just to have a little common delimited list of the selections that you make. But interestingly enough, you can do quite a lot with this setup where you have multiple pivot tables connected with a slicer. And if you don't like having multiple pivot tables, because it can really confuse the user, then just make sure you have that helper worksheet. I'm gonna right click and unhide, and let's get the helper and the raw back on screen. But this particular worksheet, you wanna be careful letting the user see it because they might not know what that is. It doesn't even look like a pivot table. It looks just like a single cell. And even though we see pivot table fields here, if you go to pivot table analyze and you click field list, then when you click this cell, it still just looks like a regular cell. And if you hit delete, because why is bathroom on the helper sheet? Well, look what we have messed up now. And if we clear it, it doesn't matter. I have a great tutorial on how to password protect worksheets, and I'll put a link to it in the description of this video, because this is a prime example of when that could really help a lot. But uh, that's it for this tutorial, and if you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click the bell icon so I can make more of them.